Notts County Talk, welcome to episode two of In Depth with today's guest, Ruben Rodriguez. Ruben, how are we? Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm all right. Yourselves? Good? Yeah, we're good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, um, thanks, Ruben. Before we get on with the video, I'd just like to say for anyone that's watching this video now and aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe because it helps us massively uh, to bring more content like this. Um, so, Ruben, we're going to come in with 10 quick fire questions. Um, we did the same on the last episode. We had Dion. Kelly Evans on. Um, so we'll do 10 quick questions um, and just give us sort of your, your first reaction. So first question, um, at the club, who are the three strongest players? So strength-wise. Uh, I think uh, Elisha Sam, Connell Rawlinson, Kyle Wooten, Kyle Cameron. I think them four are the top. Yeah, top four. Let's say top four then. Top four. Yeah. Sound. Uh, toughest player you've come up against? Uh... Difficult one to share. I think um, he's now where Ajax, uh, Ryan Gravenberg, uh, yeah, the midfielder. I think he's today, to be fair, at the Ballon d'Or as well for Poker Players of the Year, like the Young Player of the Year. Yeah. But I think that was my. Um, oh, he was 16, 17 years old and he still. Uh, I could not take the ball off him, unfortunately. Yeah. And he macked me as well, so it's not <laughs> nice. But, uh, before I go on to question three, you just mentioned it's the Ballon d'Or. What do you make of Eli Sam? not being nominated for the Puskas. Yeah, game. I just, um, so I'm still in the group share with Enzio and uh, Eli because the Dutch boys and uh, Enzio sent like um, a link of uh, all the players uh, nominated. And I know for sure, at least we know for sure, if like Ronaldo or Messi put it out, they will be there. But um, I don't know why they, they don't like give away like those kinds of prizes to a National League player or anything. So I think, I think it's unfortunate because I would love to see him there and it's, it would be nice for him. But yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. He should have been in there. It's the best goal I've ever seen, not score, I think, or one of them. Um, yeah, question three then. If you weren't a footballer, what would you like to be? Oh, what would I like to be? Uh, I like to um, to socialise. So I think like a salesman or like knowing a lot about a, a stuff and then trying to sell there, like just to... Yeah, just sales. I think a salesman. I would like to be a salesman. It yeah. Looks like you did well with the tickets for the uh, for the record attendance. Exactly, so, exactly. Um, next question then. <clears throat> What's more memorable for you, the the Mark Ellis goal against Chesterfield in the playoffs, or your winner against Grimsby a few weeks ago? Oh, the my my goal, yeah, against Grimsby, yeah. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah. George George missed but, uh, the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think I watched the. Uh, I watched you or someone talk to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, mate, unfortunately. Uh, fifth question. Then we asked Dion this. We said, "Who would uh, in the squad most likely go on Love Island?" And I know Dion. Dion, Dion, Dion said, "Yeah, said Dion said me." Yeah, it it was funny though because I think that day or the day before we were just speaking about it because I think Love Island was on TV or I don't know what was going on and Dion said like, "Yeah, you, you," but personally. I think uh, Rishi Brindley, yeah. Yeah, Brindley. Mm, yeah. 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 Number six. yeah. Yeah, number six then. Quick one. Dogs or cats? Dogs, dogs, yeah. I'm a dogger. I watched the, the movie, to be fair, Marley and Me, uh, I think four days ago. Yeah, beautiful movie, yeah. Tear yeah, uh, They always said dogs as well. Uh, do you have any pre-match rituals? Number seven, anything you do before every game? Nah, I just, uh, yeah, not much. What, what I do do this year, like when we have like a home game, I always go to, to Cal's place. He lives like a black block three and then we, he just cooks a spaghetti with pesto with a chicken. I think that's it's been different because last year we didn't do that and this year we have been. So I think that's a new pretty much uh, ritual for me and for him. Sounds solid. Uh, your favourite holiday destination? From where I've been, I normally go like just to family, but I've been once uh, to Ibiza with a team, and I think that was my uh, the best holiday I've had, yeah, so far. Yeah, was that, that really, did, uh, was that really not not so different team? Uh, no, I was uh, the third division in the Netherlands. Uh, the Treffers is it called, and we went uh, four five days to uh, Ibiza, and it was yeah, good good time. Yeah, yeah I've been um, been there a few times. Yeah, uh, most likely. To be a comedian in in the squad, who's the funniest? 
I think Jim uh, Jim is a funny character, mostly loud loud as well. To be fair, but he's funny. Um, yeah, I think he's up there. Yeah. Uh, last one for the quick questions. Then, what team do you support? Uh, it's Benfica. That's a Benfica Portuguese uh, Portuguese team. I did yeah. see they played. Didn't they play against nine men on Sunday? Yeah, they. So they played the first half. I don't know how. So they played with nine against nine men, seven 0 at half time, and then after half time they came out with seven men, and then it was a kick off for them. Passed it back to the midfield. They kicked it out. He got injured. Got off. And it wasn't allowed to play with six men, so the the game got cancelled. That's mad. crazy. Yeah, that that'll probably crazy. never you, happen again in football. Yeah, you wouldn't see that. You wouldn't see that anywhere. So I I don't know how it's possible to to play with nine men in the beginning of a game. I think I did read one of the outfield players as a goalkeeper as well. Yeah, there was yeah, two I, yeah. I read, there. yeah, I read it as well. And after twenty five seconds, they were already one 0 down. So it wasn't a, a great upstart for them. No. no, it's <laughs> no. Not at all. Moving on to the questions that me and Tom have come up with then. Uh, a bit more personal for you, Ruben. Uh, how did you get into football? Um, so, I didn't play until my eight years old. So, I was eight years old and I was always playing with my older brother. And um, we used to, like, live in... It's not a farm, but we had, a, like, a big garden. So, my dad would use, like... Um, it was, like... Um, how do you, he works with wood and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he made like two poles and like the crossbar and then we were always were playing outside. And one day our neighbors had like um, this guy who came to paint and he had connections at a team nearby because we didn't speak, the, at least my parents didn't speak the language that well and we weren't like, yeah, saying like, oh, I want to be in a team. And then all of a sudden that guy saw us play football and he was like, oh, they can, they have a bit, they have a bit. And then, um, he signed us in at a club nearby, like it was Vivi Boskant. And since then I've been uh, I've been playing. So yeah, 20, 17 years now. Did you feel straight away when you started to, you know, start kicking a football around? Did you feel that you were better than people around you or uh, you always no? I can't remember like the first time I started, but I know when I was eight years old, like the first year I, I played football in a, like for an amateur signed team. Uh, PSV Eindhoven mm. recognized it as well and they, they let me train with them and then FC Den Bosch came and they let me train with them but um, yeah I, yeah I, well, I was different than other players to fair but nothing nothing special to be honest yeah um, next one we've got is then what what motivates you what what motivated you when you were younger and, and what motivates you now to, to keep playing and improving uh, when I was younger uh, I, I can't really remember what motivated me to be fair because I was just outgoing, easy, chill, relaxed. I wasn't thinking much about football because I've only been in the professional scene for like three years now. So I was basically not really... I didn't really believe that I was going to be a professional football, to be honest with you. And uh, right now, what motivates me is uh, my family, my friends, uh, like the video you saw when I scored against Sutton, the theory too. I don't know if you've seen it, like the reaction of my my younger brother and my parents, and those kind of little things yeah, uh, yeah. that motivates me and scoring for them and yeah, making them proud. Yeah, basically. Yeah, we've got a question about about your parents that we'll go into in a little while because they they recently came to the Solihull game, didn't they? Yeah, we'll go into that in yeah. a second. Um, my question: then, Describe yourself as a player for someone that's not seen you play before. Uh. A uh, hardworking player, um, uh, technical. I think um, I got a good right foot. Uh, I like to play around the striker, like a hold-up striker, like like Kyle Wooden. I like to be running off his, like if he underneath him, be underneath him, or like running uh, after behind him. Um, yeah, just 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 a hardworking player, basically. Have you ever played any other positions when you were younger? And have you ever played? You know, you sometimes get players that are strikers now that have played in goal or left. Oh, uh, well, no, you were ready I, to go and goal against Dagenham last season. Yeah, I was. I was too fair, but it's more for uh, for the story as well. Like I like to be a bit crazy, and like at the moment, I was like, "Oh yeah, I want, I want to be in goal." And I, I have played um, goalkeeper when I, I think I played two matches goalkeeper when I was in the amateurs because I was playing in a higher team, and my trainer didn't want me to play for them. And I was like, 
yeah, can I be a goalkeeper then? Because I, I still did want to play games. So I can save a ball, to be honest. But when I was young, I always was, used to be a attacker. So never defender or anything unusual. Yeah, was that like plan, you know, for the Dagenham game? Was there always a plan if if the keeper got sent off? Who would go Yeah, in? so... Yeah, in the beginning of the season, we made this, uh, was Neil Hartley back then. We made this, we had like a, a meeting where the Gaffer said like, okay, uh, boys, uh, is everyone okay? We're having five players on the bench. Uh, so no goalkeeper, that's a risk. But if you have five players on the bench and you need a striker, you can put in three attackers and then them things. And then he said like, uh, um, does anyone wants to be a goalkeeper if, if, if it's necessary? And at that time, I wasn't playing. So I wasn't like, yeah, I'm gonna put my hand up. So I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just be be quiet and don't say anything. And I think Jim and and uh, and Doyle was the skipper back. Was was the skipper? Yeah, he said, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I will be up for it. And uh, that's why I had like a hesitation to go and goal. And eventually the gaffer said, uh, nah, Doyle. And I was happy with the decision to be fair because I made a goal uh, that yeah. day as well. The goal yeah. as well was a very very good goal as well. Yeah, outside the box. Celebration yeah. wasn't too bad either. Um, Going on to, to Birchwell then, how do you enjoy playing his style of football? Yeah, I, I like to have that freedom. Um, and of course, uh, playing out from the back, uh, I think we showed we show this year, last the end of the last season, that we, we are a really good side. There are a lot of teams that recognise the way we play. Uh, we get a lot of compliments from like teams from the higher leagues. And I think that's a, that's a really good thing going up for the future. And I think we can only improve and get better. So I, I really enjoy playing this style of football, yeah, because as you know, last year in the beginning, we we tried to play out from the back, but for one other reason, it just didn't like um, explode. And I think I wasn't involved that much as I am now. And I think uh, I'm happy where, with the style of play, yeah. Yeah, it's good to watch as well as fans, isn't it, George? It is really exciting football. Yeah, we've learned to sort of get used to it as well because it can be quite hard to watch sometimes passing out. Yes. Yeah, so, I feel and like I as time's gone on, everyone's yeah. sort of got used to it. So they get on the, the players back a lot less. True, because sometimes in the beginning, uh, the first games of the season, you were hurt fans like starting to get a bit like, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, more stressed or I don't know. And especially when Petter was in goal, he just has no oh. like, yeah, I know it can be nerve wracking. Also, yeah. for me as a player, I'm like, wow, what is it? I, I would, I couldn't do that. But it always like, of course we make mistakes, but if you make mistakes trying to play football, I think it's it's okay to make mistakes like that. So, yeah, yeah, because yeah, when it when it does work, it it is it's great to watch. Even on yeah. Saturday, the first 20, 25 minutes against Dagenham, yeah, they, they couldn't touch the ball, and that's what you want. Isn't they, it? True, and they were hanging, sitting so low, and it was so difficult to break down. But I think still that we like we played, we started very very well. Yeah. Yeah, do you sort of get do you get frustrated when teams do play like that? Yeah, I was. Too, I know we won the game, but at the end of the game, I was I was not happy with my like performance because I I think I had like 15, 20 touches on the ball and a player like I am, I want to like create stuff. I want to I want to come in the ball, turn away, make a pass, and I think um I didn't do much on um on Saturday. I didn't feel I did much for the team to help the team on Saturday. Only like but without a ball, yeah. Yeah, you even said how you've you've got better since last season. Do you feel like teams are starting to to mark you more, or you feel like you're getting a bit more attention from their players? Uh, yeah, it does feel like that, and it's it's nice when like when Cal is on the field because he gets he has a player with him, and then they're trying to like um, close the midfield, like so very close compact, like what we so call zone three, the most important zone, and um, it does get like frustrating at all, but. It does motivate me as well that I, when the game comes and I see players trying to like mark me, it, it motivates me. Okay, you're trying to mark me, and then I say to myself, okay, let's show what I can do to him and all. Yeah, like a little motivation as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'll, I'll find a question before we go on to some that we've we've had sent from the fans because we've had loads of questions sent in. So if you have sent a question into us and it's not it's not on our list, we apologise, but we've we'll be here for like two or three hours without it. So I appreciate all the questions that, that you fans have sent in. Um, the final thing we've sort of touched on, it, Ruben, is we um, we sit in the Pavis stand and um, half-time in the Solihull game, we actually spoke to your parents that have come. 
Um, and we, we spoke to him at full time as well, speaking about how well you're doing. And they seemed they seemed very proud that you were playing and you know putting in these, yeah. these great performances. Does that does that how does that make you feel? Because that wasn't was that their first game at Meadow Lane? Uh, yeah, there was a first time in England, first time in Meadow Lane. Yeah, uh, first time in a long time since they see me play again. And um, yeah, like I said, it, it motivates me because. That's what you do for, of course, you do it for your own and for later for your kids and your career. But for now, I do it for my parents, for my family, for my brothers, for my friends that are watching from home, uh, supporting. And uh, the other day when I scored to Boreham Wood, uh, they had him. Um, so, yeah, my father, he put it on TV. And my mom gets stressed a lot when she sees me play and when they kick me, she's like, oh, no, is something going on. So she goes to bed and then my father started screaming and she was upstairs. And then she walked downstairs and he had like tears in his eyes. So, yeah, it was um, it was good to hear that. And, um, yeah, that motivates me. And, um, yeah, it, it gets me going through the day as well sometimes. Yeah, will, they be, kind of... will they be coming back soon to Madeleine? Uh, so we, we're trying to get him back at the uh, 23rd of December for Christmas because last year it was a hard time on Christmas because uh, everyone was mm. on lockdown and all that. And people were, of course, with the family. So... I hope they can come with Christmas, but the, the thing is, we play Kings Lynn away, twenty sixth, so um, they they might have to watch it from here. So um, I come back home later and just be with them after that. I just received the note that Ronaldo became sixth in the Ballon d'Or, so uh, yeah, not happy about that. To be fair, that, yeah, that might answer a question we've got later, but it's sixth, but that's quite low. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, he's still th he's thirty six, so uh, he's still there. It's, it's it's a good thing as well, though. Uh, do we know the winner yet? As we're recording, uh, I think I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, is it Messi? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah people are saying Messi, but I kind of see Lewandowski getting it as well. To be fair, yeah, I, I think it should be Lewandowski. The amount of goals he scores. Yeah, I, true, and especially when the lockdown or the COVID came, he didn't receive the Ballon d'Or even though he was getting it. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that, that's sort of our questions. Now, we've already mentioned we've had a ridiculous amount of questions that people wanted to ask you. Um, some of them were better than others. I think we had Will that's on our channel wanted to know what you, we haven't put it in, but I may as well ask you. He wants to know what you order from Nando's. Um, or if um, you go to Nando's. So it's um, five chicken wings with uh, the spicy rice and uh, just uh, chips chips on the side and sometimes coleslaw because i really like uh, english coleslaw to be fair there you go will, will will was on the channel quite a lot he was desperate for you to to answer that question so will but i am i am i'm not going that much this year because i need to uh stay fit this year you know is that your favorite place to eat in nottingham or one of them yeah and always when i so i have my family coming around and uh, my friends then in uh, in november in the october and then I took them to Nando's as well because I just, I know everyone that comes is going to love Nando's because chicken is just nice. And so, yeah, I, to be fair, it is my favorite place here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll get on with the, the more serious questions that Will's not sent in. So the first one yeah. actually comes from my dad. So he said, uh, can you hear the crowd chanting your name during a match or are you just too focused? Because we've obviously got the song about you and Cal. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I can hear it. Yeah. Because of course, sometimes, it always like happens when when I do something or like when I create something or when I have a good chance or when I score. So at that time, you are focused at the game, but it's probably like all gone out of play or it's a corner kick or that. So at that time, yeah, I, I can hear it. And uh, yeah, it's it's special. It's it's still, it's always special to hear. Yeah, I bet it is because it, it builds uh, out of the lane. Have you ever had that before at a club or is it like, you know, because you, nah. like you're quite a, a, a main player, aren't you, at Knott's? Like, have you ever had that before at any of your other clubs? No, nah, to be fair, no, because uh, when I was at Bosch, we had like, at most, like 4K people. And then, of course, we had like the, the hooligans that was like a K, but I never was like the the player that was might be going to turn around the game or that might do something special, so... I enjoy it. I enjoy being here. And always when I was out in the city there, I never used to get recognised. Maybe once or twice, but not as much as in Nottingham. Of course, Nottingham is bigger than the Bosch, but yeah, it's still it's still different uh, being here than there, yeah. Yeah. Um, next question then. 
This one's from Ellie on Instagram who asks, who's the best player you've ever played with? So, uh, so I say it's uh, his name is Luke Browers. Um, more because he is uh, one of my best mates, but uh, he plays in the in the Eredivisie. He's been player of the month in the month October. Yeah, and um, no. he's just yeah, he's a he's a midfielder, a box to box, and he just does not lose the ball. He's so calm on the ball, and and he scores goals. So yeah, it's a it's the best player I've played with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I bet there are a few others you could name as well, but like we just said, playing against Gravenberg as well, good player. Yeah. Um, next question is one from Facebook from Mark Stainsby. He said, "How much do you enjoy playing football in England and living in the city of Nottingham?" So, is it is it how different is football in England to what you've experienced before? So, in the Netherlands, is like very very open play. It's not like compact, not like defensive. Uh, to be honest, defense, uh, defenders are not that disciplined to defend there. Like, if they concede a goal, people accept it. And since I came to England, you just see it's a bit harder. Um, like, when sometimes when Connell makes a block, he's, like, celebrating. Carl Cameron, the same. Um, you just see that the players here, the defenders especially, have more discipline. Like, they want to keep a clean sheet. And um, it's more difficult to score. That's mm -hmm. what I've experienced. And uh, living in the city is... I like Nottingham. Uh, it's a big city. I, I never used to live in the city. I always looked like in a in a small town with like thirty ish people, thirty thousand ish people. Sorry, and um, no, nah, I like I like the city. I like the team. I like my teammates. So yeah, I have no complaints whatsoever. With the city be, being as it is, um, how much would you like to play in a, a, a Notts County against Forest match? Oh yeah, it's it's it will be nice. Yeah, because I think for the fans especially, it will be like a beautiful game and i wish it would have happened like in the fa cup or yeah but unfortunately uh maybe maybe next time yeah um, was there any was there any cultural differences that were massive difference to you coming over to england no nah, to be fair not because like the weather the weather in the netherlands is i think is similar uh, it's been snowing there as well uh, uh, yesterday or two days before uh, this morning was snow here it's cold there it's cold here i think Whenever it's hot there, it's it's hot here. I think just sometimes it's a bit warm in the Netherlands, though. But nah, culture-wise and food, like I do miss Dutch food. I do miss Dutch food, but it is I, I still like it here. Not to be fair, like and I like the the two uh, hot meals. Like lunch is a uh, is a hot meal, and then of course it's hot meal. And when you're in the Netherlands, you always in in the after training we always used to eat bread. Bread with like butter and, and and ham or cheese, whatever. So I do I do enjoy, yeah. Yeah. Next question, George, for you. Uh, this one's from Benedict from Twitter. You seem to have a measure of the National League now. Do you find the adjustment hard at first? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was hard at first. Uh, not just the, the National League, uh, the English country, uh, the new teammates, just, just a lot of new things uh, away from family. And as soon as, as yeah, as as I got my confidence, and you start playing against like all the teams, you start to know them and start to to see how it is and yeah, how the national league is. Yeah, you you start to to find out how how it is. So yeah, it's been it's been better this year. Yeah. Was there anyone particular at the club that that really helped you settle in? Uh, of course, the players. Uh, I was living with Brins. Uh, he helped me a lot because we we used to live together. Uh, he used to like cook good food. Um, whenever I was like sick, he, he had like he, he always had like good body. Um, he always took care of his body, and he helped me with that. So I think Brins helped me a lot. I think Kel this year is helping me a lot, like outside football, and uh, he invited me for Christmas as well. So that's a that's a nice thing, a special thing because Christmas is family time and. To be invited for this, it's nice, yeah. Yeah. Next question then is from Max Roberts on Instagram. He said, "You have a great partnership with Wooten. You've already mentioned um, you like playing just off him. How good is is Kyle, and how much has he helped? How many goals you've scored?" Uh, yeah, now, like I said, like uh, I, I like to play with like strong like strikers that hold the ball and make up the play, and not just like go stand in front of goal and wait for a ball to come to finish. So um, 
I really like to play with Carl. He's a great guy outside of football. Uh, I always like hang out with him. Um, he helped me, yeah, of course, the whole of play. And I think our connection in the game is great. Um, we do also a lot of hard work without the ball. It's not just me or just him. Also, in that way, we we help each other. So now nah, my my uh, my partnership with Carl Wooden is uh, yeah is amazing, and I hope it lasts. It will last long. I think I saw a stat that there's only two other partnerships in the National League that have better goals and assists between them. So it's uh, it's definitely working. It is definitely working. Yeah. It must be it must be a Chmanga then because he has 16 goals alone and we got 16 goals together. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but he's he's not going to score on the 21st. I don't think. Definitely not. Nah, he won't score. Because like, we got, we got. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> next one, George. This one's from Sarah on Facebook. She says, Ruben, what is your favourite goal for Knots? It wasn't the, the most beautiful, but I think the Grimsby Town was was the, my favourite goal. Especially the feeling afterwards, the away fans, uh, the atmosphere there, because it was a big crowd and... And it was three big points after Bromley and um, and, uh, and Stockport. So um, I think uh, that was my favourite goal for for Notts County in a, in a Notts County shirt. Yeah. Did you always feel like there was going to be a chance at the end? Because first half Grimsby were were pretty good first half. Yeah. And I to be fair, I wasn't playing the way I I wanted to play, but Doyle, he uh, he kept saying to me. Keep positive, keep positive. The chance will come, chance will come. And then when I saw Matty running and he put out a cross, I was happy to to get like a little, yeah, sort of tap in, yeah. Yeah, I can't, I, I still can't believe you missed that game, George, but there we go. I can't. Well, <laughs> so, so good. Um, it's up there with the Chesterfield and, and Barrow away a few years ago, definitely. Um, next question is from Adam. So I feel like we might have already got this. Who is your football in Yeah. Uh, yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. Top three. Go top he, three. He, he, um, I, like it's not like I have like a special idol the way I like I want to be, but I love watching like skillful players. So I'll say Neymar Junior is up there, Ronaldo, and of course, even though I'm a Ronaldo love, I'm not a Messi hater, so I see Messi up there as well. Yeah. So that when we you were talking about the FA Cup earlier, would it have been if if we'd have got further on and we drew Man United would that have been the dream the dream match Man United yeah. and Lane or Old Trafford yeah it, it's always been a dream since I was younger to play against or with Cristiano Ronaldo but that was when I was way way young I always used to like calculate okay if I'm 19 years old he's going to be this old he might still, probably still be playing and now I'm 25 and he is still playing and I still haven't like had my dream come out but if we would play against yet. Manchester United yeah, if, if we were to play Manchester United, not just Ronaldo, but like Bruno Fernandes, uh, Diogo Dalot is there as well, the, the right back. So it would be nice to uh, to play against them, yeah, but unfortunately not this year. You could uh, you could still be playing with him for the national team, though. You could get selected. Yeah. There's still time. Yeah. If they get to the World Cup. Yeah, I know. First. It, it, they're probably playing Italy, aren't they? Um, yeah, so they have first they have Turkey at home. And then, of course, Italy is playing North Macedonia. So, yeah, they probably play Italy in the final. So, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not really happy about that. No, tough, toughest draw. Toughest draw. Next question, then. <clears throat> Henry on Instagram asks, where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, I'm not like a planner. Like, I, I don't like to, like, look, look far ahead, but... Just thinking out now, I, my dream is to play like MLS. So I hope to, at 30 years old, to still play football at a high level um, and hopefully done great things in England to uh, to make a move to, to the MLS and just there, like, get down to my retirement two, three years until I'm 33 years old and then save a lot of money and go back home to the Netherlands with my family. Yeah, there's some the MLS has some very good players now, doesn't it? It's, it's a good league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some fantastic players. Um, the next next question is sort of a joint question. We had quite a few people asking this, so we've sort of already touched on it. So you might just say we've already seen it. But Margaret and John, who are your favorite? Margaret, ask who's your favorite teammate, and John wants to know who your three best mates at the club are. So favorite teammate is it like on the pitch where I like play most with. Uh, yeah, you, you could say that. Yeah, or off the pitch. I do like. 
so on the pitch, like the three are like Matty Palmer because he, the way he plays, and I think he's given me the most assists this season as well. So I, I have to say his name, Callum Roberts, of course, because he creates a lot and we got a good connection on field. And then Kyle Wooten. Uh, yeah. Off the pitch, uh, Cal Roberts, uh, Frank Vincent, and yeah, I got I, we, to be fair, I have a lot of like teammates where I really do a lot with. Um, so I can say Elisha Sam, Carol Mitchell, Joel Taylor, Aaron the Main, Carl Cameron, Lewis Knight, Ian and Brooks, um, Kyle Wood, and yeah, Dion. Dion Kelly Evans, yeah, a lot of a lot of like players. So, but the top two are like Cal and Frank Finney. Yeah. Um, got another question here, George. FIFA underscore Quest asks, what what has been your favorite moment as a Knots player? Uh, I can't say the Grimsby game again. Let's say uh, at Chesterfield. The Chesterfield home game, uh, the three two after ninety minutes was was one of my favorites as well. Yeah. So them, them two, like the Grimsby and um, and the Chesterfield game. I bet Weymouth's mm-hmm. up there as well, isn't it? You know when the the fans came back in for the first time. Oh, after. the first game, yeah. And then I had yeah, the penalty. Yeah. Yeah, Enzo. Penalty. We won three 0 that game, did we? Yeah, could have been eight. Penalty Enzo. Oh yeah, yeah. I missed, I missed a big chance as well at the end. To be fair, that was one of those games where it was sort of saying that, um, you know, we as fans always say, it, it, some one game somebody is going to get battered by not it's just because of the way we play um yeah Weymouth, and that was Weymouth could have been that could have been even worse yeah true mm-hmm. um i think for us george the the best game we've had since ruben's been here it's got to be chessfield as well yeah yeah without a doubt yeah that was an amazing day that was like yeah <sighs> yeah crazy. yeah and what was it and the bar the the barnet away game the start of the season was a very yeah. nice game as well to be fair yeah, for yeah. the fans away fans after five years not winning the first league game mm. or something was it yeah and then it winning five nil aw- yeah and then winning five nil away was uh i think it's a special moment for the fans as well i yeah. don't even think we'd scored in an opening game not never mind win i don't think we scored a goal in the first yeah. so many so yeah it, it was a very very good game um two more questions then so uh Kubrick says if you could play with any player in the world for one game who would it be and we're gonna we're gonna say it can't be Obviously, it'll be Ronaldo, but it can't be Ronaldo for this one. Who else would you play with? I think Bernardo Silva at the moment. The way he it's, likes creates and yeah, yeah, I, yeah. The way he creates stuff and yeah, he like puts the ball wherever he wants and quick fee and all that. Yeah, I would like to play with him. And sort of on that, if you could test yourself up against any defender, who would you like to to test yourself against? <laughs> Ruben, D- yeah, I know Portuguese play. I keep saying my uh, name in Portuguese, but Ruben Diaz at the moment, yeah, maybe, yeah, or like he's... a Virgil van Dijk or Matthijs de Ligt. Um, yeah, like the big, strong defenders with a great tackle in the in the leg. Yeah, I, th- I think you'd have all of them to be honest. Easy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I me, mean, I think I'd, I think that's, yeah. van Dijk had that stat that no one had dribbled past him for like two years. I, I think you'd dribble past mm. him in the first 10 minutes, to be honest, Ruben. Um, I hope so, I hope so. No problem. Um, final question then, George. It's quite a long one. Yeah. MRB on Twitter says, your enthusiasm on the pitch is contagious. Do you light up as soon as the ball hits your feet or do you use the adrenaline of the match day to play like that? Uh, the enthusiasm doesn't mean like um, the way I am on the pitch? or Yeah, so um, we'll have to shorten this question because it's quite long, but he, he was talking about the way that you always track back, you always work hard. Um, so basically... The way you are on the pitch, are you like that in training, or is it when you go to a match, the match situations like that? No, I think it's, it's in training as well. Of course, you have days like where you you are a bit like not like as hard working as you can be, but I think in training, I always like try to train hard, work hard, and in match days, yeah, uh, I think you need to work hard, like because you're playing in front of fans, so you're playing for a team. And I think that's you get paid for what you do, and I think it's normal to to work really hard for the team and to do your to do your best to to get a win. And yeah, and to be fair, I'm a really active guy outside football. Like I'm really busy and all that, so I think I can like finally express my activeness uh, on the pitch as well. Yeah, 
Great, fantastic. Ruben, that, that's all our questions, um, all the ones that the fans have sent in as well. Um, so basically, really appreciate your time coming out and speaking to us. Been been very, very interesting. Thank you. No worries, mate. Um, I also want to thank you as well for the, it's the first time I've really been able to thank you for the signed shirt you gave us, which raised money for the Notts County Foundation. It raised, I think it was nearly £300, wasn't it, George? Yeah, yeah. So just under it's, gone, it's gone to charity, yeah. There, was, yeah. there were hundreds of bids on that as well. So you're very, very popular. Okay, that's, that's good to hear. That's good to hear, yeah. No worries, um, mate. Thank you for coming on, Ruben. If you did enjoy the video, um, as always, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And thank you again, Ruben, for joining us. No worries.